Okay, it's another weekend and we're back on this old 1950s Fordson Major Diesel. Uh, this has been doing a couple of bits to it, uh, some things that we found last time uh, that I don't know if I actually included in the video or if it was after I'd stopped filming, uh, was that the um, we already knew the back axle's oil was very high, uh, but relatively clean, uh, but then the gearbox oil was completely gone. And uh, it turns out that these have got a common problem uh, when they get old or not used for a while, is the PTO seal goes and uh, slowly the oil from the gearbox runs into the back axle, which is then probably why we're seeing all of this oil come out of the hubs uh, because the back axle was far too full. So maybe even that the seals in the back axle aren't shot, but they'll probably need to do it anyway. So what we have been doing this morning, uh, which has taken the better part of an hour, is to drain the oil, excess oil from the back axle to put back into the gearbox. Because um, the amount of oil that these hold uh, between the back axle and the gearbox is around about 60 litres of EP90. Um, so that's getting on close to 200 quid's worth of oil. And obviously if we've got a problem with the gearbox oil seals anyway, there's no point putting fresh stuff in it if it's all just going to drain back into the back axle. Um, plus this is, thing is just going to need a complete strip down anyway. Um, so there was a couple of people on a forum that I joined when I started working on this um, that said that it should have a... I can't remember what they call it now, a tilting pipe or a tailing pipe, something like that, to do with the hydraulics, but this has got a different hydraulic setup on it, and uh, it doesn't have that quick release connection for a hose. And they were saying that once you get it running, uh, you can use the PTO to actually push oil back into the gearbox, and that's what a lot of people do, but this doesn't have that pipe. So we've had to take the three-point hitch off, well, some of it anyway, um, just the back half here, uh, which is now sitting up on there and amazingly nothing on the tractor's actually seized uh, all the pins came out everything came out okay uh, so we were able to get that section off which then gave us relatively easy access to the drain plug on the bottom of the back axle and uh, obviously i got a decent chunk of ep90 on me uh, which is horrible oil it stinks and uh, it didn't actually look too cracking either it's quite dark it's quite got a few bits in it and clearly some water as well I think but it's only got to get the tractor from here to outside and around the side and um, so it's going to be driving for all of about five minutes uh, but it's better to have something in that gearbox than nothing and hopefully before we get the uh, go ahead with the transport guy hopefully it's not all drained back into the back axle because that would be a bit of a mistake <laughs> but we've just um put some fresh diesel in the tank and we're going to start going around now and uh, doing the bleeding of the fuel system so we're just going to see see what that crops up and then go from there and uh, we've had a lot of wind recently and I don't think I could see daylight through there before <laughs> oh god so yeah we've probably not got much time um, another good storm could see this uh, this old barn come down. Uh, so I'm listening out for creaks and groans and bits dropping off of it whilst I'm in. Okay, well, looks like we've got the uh, diesel system pretty well primed there now. Um, obviously made a bit of a mess, but we'll uh, probably clean that up with a rag in a second. Uh, so we've got fuel coming out of the, all the way from the filter, to the bleed nipple here on the pump and it's pumping quite well and so i think we're uh, we're probably at a stage now where we can just go ahead and see if it will uh, if it'll fire up so yeah slightly tense moment <laughs> okay we must be completely mad <clears throat> climb aboard see what's going to happen, if anything at all. Who knows, maybe she won't even turn over. Just because she did last week doesn't mean the psych hasn't been horribly wrong in the meantime. Okay, I've 
I've got this stop lever in my hand. I don't trust the pull button. He's in neutral. Throw always on idle. Okay, let's give her a bump. See what happens. Oh, she's trying. Tiny bit of throttle, maybe. She's trying. a couple of pumps. She's oh. proper close. She just spluttered. Jesus Christ, I think it seems to be quite loud. Just going to give the uh, stop a little bit of a pull and see if she doesn't fire. Oh yeah, the stop definitely works. That's good. Okay, I think I just found the uh, cold start button. It's giving us a little bit move, more movement on the rack. I'm assuming that will mean more fuel. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so close. It's not gotten up in the battery, even with the cold starter primed. She's just not gotten up. <laughs> hey, definitely not gotten up. Okay. <laughs> That's going to have to do it for today. She's very, very close though. So close. Okay, this could be it. We've got the old rusty exhaust on there. I just try and quiet it down. There are some, some people next door that are in that house. So <laughs> if this does go, it would probably terrify them. So we're just going to chuck the exhaust on. We've got the charged battery now. So yeah, I suppose there's, uh, there's nothing really more to, to say or do than just to try and see if she'll go. We're going to run it for a few seconds if it does fire because we've not got any coolant in it. And this time we're also going to try pushing the clutch in. Uh, theory being there that obviously it should take some strain off the starter motor without it having to turn the gearbox. Clutch is down. Okay, let's give her a go. Gonna smoke us out fairly quickly. <laughs> Holy smokes. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's a runner. Okay, we're happy with that. She a run. All right, I'm gonna give it five minutes to clear out in here. God, that stinks. Disconnect the battery. Okay, well, there we go. That was the first official start of the Fordson Major Diesel. What we believe is around 20 years. So yeah, it wasn't too bad. It didn't put up too much of a fight, to be honest. We just needed a bit of a stronger battery, so we had that on charge. And uh, once that was charged up with the cold start button pushed, she actually went straight away. Yeah, she was just a little bit of a trouble keeping her going. Uh, I just wanted to get her off a of throttle and idling straight away, but she didn't quite like that. She wanted to be, she wanted to have a little bit of throttle really. Uh, but it was just the smoke that's building out far too quickly. Uh, but after a few runs for a couple of seconds, uh, you did see that she actually did settle down. She actually did idle, and idle fairly low too. Uh, so the only thing we've done now is we just uh, turned her over with the uh, tractor in reverse and the clutch down, and uh, she didn't move. Uh, so I would have to guess that the clutch is going to be okay, and uh, we should be able to... Uh, reverse this old girl out of here fingers crossed that's the next step so we've just got to get a date from the chap of when he wants to get the transporter over here and then we'll fire her up again and we'll uh, we'll drive her out yeah but whilst testing the uh, clutch it actually fired straight away it fired up straight away so it was actually running with the clutch down in gear and uh, yeah that wasn't a problem for it so yeah, if it wasn't so close to the back doors, I probably would have just give it a quick little try and see if it moved back. Uh, but at the moment, we've not got the not got the other door open. So yeah, we'll have to come back, get the other door open on the barn, fire up. She should start straight up now. Now that she's run a little bit, I think she'll uh, she'll go first first turn over probably. She'll fire. Yeah, good little tractor. Okay, well that's enough for this one now.